Hi friends, welcome back to 15 minute stream of consciousness on each of the 12 zodiac signs. And my name is Julie, and I'll talk about Taurus and Venus. Taurus, well, it's the second sign sequentially um, out of the 12 signs, starting with Aries, the spark, my existence, chi, life force. Um, and then Taurus is the embodiment, it's the physical embodiment it's my body it's um my survival and i see a lot of the times the taurus attention can be on either of two main themes or both of finances and nature um nature because it's that spirit encapsulated venus it's beauty and it's the physical realm but it's the inspired physical realm it's not so much the dense earth like when i think of capricorn um, which is focused on very much focused on the dense level of the structure of society and a more complex sense of density and the physical realm and what it means to be um, engaged as a human with uh, social structures and concrete buildings. When I think of Taurus, I think, and of the earth sign Taurus, I think of nature and earth herself, um, mother nature, Venus, the empress card, because abundance, having, having abundance and value and beauty, the empress card. But yeah, because, um, because nature is alive. It's not brute. It's not dense. Even the minerals, the crystal life form, it's it's living. It has that chi. It's it's just the second sign in. It's and it's very simple. It's not complex. Like when you look at um, a building, a, a tower in New York City, um, what is it? If you just look at it abstractly, it's it's very complex. It's an extension of a concept. It's there because it's an office building and it has cubicles and it makes sense that we have these things because then people can work together on their computers and it's very functional and sophisticated for humanity. But nature, it's it's simple. It's more simple. It's vital. It's life force. And in that sense, in the spiritual sense, it's infinitely complex beyond human comprehension. Um, in its subtlety and so it's it's the bull and when we think of the bull out in the grassy field in that peaceful still field all day it's just rest and digest it has four stomachs and when I use the word simple I mean that the function of the archetype of Taurus is to be on a less complex level. It's on the, the level of the body, the level of cooking a great, sensual, delicious, um, Venusian, pleasurable meal and just sitting and resting and digesting. And it takes its time to move at the pace of the body. It's so sensitive and aware of the five senses that what it does all day may look to the more complex mental body or socially oriented uh, zodiac signs as though it's lazy because it's not doing anything. Um, this is one part of Taurus. The other part of Taurus is doing a lot. I'll get to that. Um, but the, it's doing a lot when its attention is on the level of the body. That's what it is here to do. It is kind of a rest and digest lifetime for Taurus embodiments. It's very much about experiencing the phenomenon of moment to moment being present with how comfortable am I in my surrounding environments, just feeling everything around me and moving yeah it's sort of like the day is dictated by the bodily functions that's just what this Taurus archetype is about um in terms of uh if it's going to be more about doing because it is also very practical and it's very practically minded that Mercury and Taurus is going to look at what do I need to get done? What do I need to do in order to feel secure in my body? Um, and so that's kind of like the existential question is security and survival. 
And then beyond that is comfort, luxury, and this ability to just like, oh, like expand, like in the comfort, luxurious nature, in the realm of, uh, yeah, the fairies, the earth realm. Um, and so in terms of finances, I have security, having what I need, uh, the Taurus says I have. It wants to feel abundant. It wants to feel that Emperor's card, and it can feel lack in its shadow. It can feel like it doesn't have what it wants or needs, um, and it wants to possess things. It wants to acquire stuff, um, and it wants to feel, yeah, just like because the body is an extension of this sense of me. It's an extension of. Uh, my existence, my sense of self and my identity. And, and it wants to have stuff that it surrounds itself with that is a beautiful extension um, of me. And, and so it can extend its identity out. Um, Venus, the Venusian energy is very beautiful. It's very feminine. A lot of times with the mass, the man with the solar sign of Taurus, there's also these like two different classic appearances, which is interesting. I feel like sometimes have this, they have like two or a few varieties within them. And then some, some signs are more like just this one. But a lot of the times there is uh, an effeminate quality to even a man with a Taurus sun. Um, in some sense, and it could be like even in their voice, if not in their appearance, because Taurus rules the throat. Uh, and and it's it's attractive. It's attractive on that that Taurus Scorpio polarity. Um, it's it needs to learn boundaries because in its shadow, the Scorpio energy is merging with others and it can have its boundaries crossed where others are merging with it and wanting things from that seductive attractive venusian energy that the the venus it's so passive um and if the sun is in venus the solar expressive dominance is very effeminate and passive and it's kind of like libra it's like um, just going along with what you are doing. And so it's um, lessons around boundaries are important for the Taurus Scorpio axis. Um, and, and yeah, questions around existence come up. So this question of value, um, am I valuable? Is my, is my value, like is, am I worthy of existence kind of a thing? What is my worth? Um, it can be like bank account worth equals self-worth, those kinds of memes, um, which I don't think are absolutely necessarily true, but it can be true for some people and for the Venus Taurus archetype. Um, because of, like, at the bottom line, there's intrinsic value. If we look at nature, it's not a question of how can I commercialize this? How can I take it away from its pure essence and sell it as lumber? It's like, don't you recognize the beauty of this tree? Are you sensitive and tuned in enough to feel the intrinsic value of a living being that is a tree or that is nature? Um, and and so in that, um, the Scorpio Taurus axis needs to learn about its own intrinsic value as existing and being alive. It's kind of almost sometimes wants the universe to prove to it that it's worthy of existence and that it can have everything that it needs in order to survive. There can be insecurities around what do I have? How am I? And then in its in its glory, the, the Taurus energy is self-reliance. It's being able to take care of myself. It's being able to see what do I need and I can get those needs met on my own in a clear way, in a way that doesn't entangle other people's energy, like relying on scorpionic uh, resource <laughs> resourcing might. Um, the Taurus also, in terms of value, needs to... It's it has to be moved by something that it finds valuable. It's very inertia. It's that stillness, just happy to be content and just feel good in its body, sitting with a cup of tea, meditating all day long, just being content 
and then if it wants to go for a walk, going for a nice beautiful sunset walk um, before it prepares dinner. And, and it's sort of like the rhythm of the day is around the rhythm of the body and how the body feels and how it's touching into the environment around it. And so to move the Taurus energy to do something, it really needs to find it very valuable and have like a purpose and a reason to do it. Um, and to get a momentum going for this Taurus energy, which moves very slowly, it needs to be moved by um, by something that's worth its attention and energy and time, and um, and it can find a sense of self value by by aligning itself with what it finds valuable, because in the shadow of Taurus there can be this sort of selling out, selling myself because I'm so be beautiful. What do I have of value? but what other people want of me, I will give it to them. You know, like, what if a tree said that? You know, what if a, a living tree said, um, you know, gosh, what do I have of value to offer you other than lumber? Then you can make use of my dead body to build your house, you know? Sorry to be dramatic. But, um, you know, it's like, well, no, I, I recognize my intrinsic value. I, I recognize the beauty I have to offer as a spiritual, as a, a touchdown of, of pure spirit. I'm, I'm a tree, I'm vital. If you hug me, I will give you vitality. And so in recognizing my own worth and value, I can then stand firm in my right to live in, in this encapsulated God, source, spirit, energy of being a tree. And then I get to offer it to all the, all the beings that enjoy me, all the little bugs, all the birds, all the people who have eyes to see and are, are Taurus energy and sensitive enough to feel um, that they can receive vitality by just tapping into my vitality in a wholesome symbiotic way, of course, not in like a vampiric way. But yeah, um, so so when we recognize our own value, Taurus, then we can share that with the world in a way that is practical and that can ultimately nurture us and validate us and show and show us I am valuable I do have something of value to offer the world and that's me and my truth um and Taurus energy it's very uh yeah it's it's again it going back to like simple as opposed to complex like it doesn't it doesn't need to um be anything other than what it is it represents itself very honestly and directly um it's very straightforward because it doesn't have, it's not, like when I think of the op the opposite of Scorpio, um, which can be engaged in power dynamics, it can be engaged in um, more emotional qualities. The Taurus, it's just simple, it's just earth. And it's almost like the simplicity of Taurus and the, it's sort of innocent almost, it's like, I can see the Taurus energy um, in dynamic with the Scorpio energy saying, like, no, I don't want to go there. Like, the Scorpio energy is like, um, okay, here's a good example. Because the Taurus, it's so sensual. It's so in its body. It loves sex. It loves the pleasures of sex. And But for Scorpio, that means, like, merging souls. That means, like, intertwinement. That means, like, soul contracts, marriage and um, merging energies and and really melding together as uh, one interdependent unit. But the Taurus is like, oh, whoops, like I was just in it for fun and for pleasure and to, let's keep it light. Um, the Scorpio says like, let's have a talk about this. Let's go there. Um, what's going on? Tell me your deepest feelings here. And the Scorpio is like, like, no, no, like just be chill. Just be chill. Just keep it light. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to feel these difficult emotions. I don't want to um, be processing with you. I don't really actually want to go deep or be intimate. I just want to um, have fun and be in a place of like pleasure and enjoyment. And so there can come up a kind of Taurus shadow when it it doesn't really know how to deal with the, um, the messier, deeper, darker things um, because it's so motivated to survive and pleasure shows us where survival energy is going towards. Um, like the health of the body is pleasurable. We feel content when we're healthy and we can just sit and enjoy feeling healthy um, and just feeling good and eating good food and feeling nourished. 
Um, and so it can be polarized by, uh, like, if something feels messy. Um, so, like, a lesson for the Taurus, along with setting boundaries, is also um, to to open up to the Scorpio side and to integrate it, to integrate the depths, because, uh, you know, as a polarity point, the Taurus is also very, very deep, um, and it accesses it, again, through the sensuality of the body, in a way. So, okay, that's 15 minutes. Keep going on that one. But if you like this video, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. Um, if you're interested in a reading, you can contact me at prismcause at gmail.com. I'll put that in the description box below, along with my website, <clears throat> along with any afterthoughts I might have. I might have some because I reached 15 minutes pretty fast on that one. Okay, bliss out.